Hi everyone, my name is Dumindra Rupasinghe and I am here at the Grand Ballroom of Hotel Galadari as we attend the Women's Leadership Forum 2022. This event has been organized by the Women's Chamber of Industry and Commerce and I am extremely excited to be speaking to many inspiring personalities as we watch them break the bias. here with Shiranti Kure, the Chief Transformation Officer of HNB, a very inspiring lady who is also part of an important panel discussion for today's event. Shiranti, a quick question. How important is this event and what are your thoughts on it? Um, it's, the event is very timely, I think, and it brings to focus and brings to the platform something that is rarely spoken about, that is breaking the bias. So I think it's a timely topic and it's time we bring these topics to the forum, open forum, and have a wider dialogue, men, women and everyone else. All right, yes, absolutely. And how important is it to break the bias in today's day and time for a better tomorrow? So um, biases, prejudices of any kind, you know, they limit you, they hold you back, they pull people back, they kind of shatter people's confidence. I think therefore whether it's gender-based bias or any bias or prejudice, uh, it is important to break them and make people bring their full potential and bring value into the table freely with their natural talents. Absolutely, and you were also part of a very important discussion at the panel discussion that we had today. Uh, with that, do you think, in your opinion, do you think we can reach out to a larger community with such initiatives being taken? Uh, yeah, I certainly think so. You see, we need to reach out to a larger community, create awareness, create sensitization through mass media, TV, radio, social media and that way we can uplift the awareness level and the knowledge of everyone as a whole. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to us and we wish you all the very best and hoping to see you very soon. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. I am here with Zulf, the founder of Pick Me on as we speak about how Pick Me is helping to break the bias. Zulf, how important is this event today and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think uh, the event is well done. I think we are obviously very invested in making sure that women participation in our industry improves, right? Uh, when you take uh, the driving industry, right? I'm, I'm talking about taxis, you know, logistics and whatnot. And this is a this is a problem, right? We don't have women participation. Uh, since we started this company, we wanted to see how we can make sure that more women come and drive on our platform. And I think we've done well. I think we could do even better. So events like this sort of help us, sort of you know, break the bias, and that's the theme uh, this year. And I think we've done a lot. Obviously, uh, our programs with IFC, IFC to ensure that more women participates in this industry. Uh, because this is a, a male dominant industry. For some reason, males have been dominating it. And we are doing our little bit to make sure more women come into the industry. And I think it gives us, through platforms like us, it gives women a lot of flexibility to participate in this industry and also participate in the economic development of the country. And that's why uh, we think events like this are going to be very helpful. Absolutely. And with that, do you think events like this in the future could also help to develop more women coming into the, um, into the world of the driving industry as well? And what is your take on it? And how do you think that you could help in the future to overcome such bias? Yeah, so I think... Uh I, I think it's just getting the message across, right? It's, it's knowing that it's okay to, you know, be doing a driving job, right? Uh, this is an industry that people look down upon, right? Now we're trying to convert that and, and, and we see people coming from the Middle East driving on our platform. We see professionals driving on our platform, right? Just like that, we see women coming and driving on the platform. So, which is great. And of course, like I said, the events like this sort of bring the message out and I think uh, 
it, it removes the biasness uh, amongst, uh, you know, in, in these industries. Well, wonderful, wonderful to hear that and wonderful to be speaking to you. Thank you very much for talking to us and wishing you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. I'm here with Anuji De Silva, the chairperson of the Women's Chamber of Industry and Commerce. And this wonderful, inspiring lady is the lady that is behind such wonderful events and this wonderful event of the Women Leadership Forum 2022. So, Anuji, a simple question to you. How important is this event and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. So, so I'm not the lady behind this event. It's 15 very strong board members who are really putting it. So I just want to acknowledge the effort. Uh, so this is very important because I think uh, it's important for women to support each other because I think uh, so some other one of the ladies said, okay, we really enjoy being here because there are no filters. We don't feel uncomfortable asking questions because we know it's all females. Uh, so that's what really this event is, to help you to build yourself, empower yourself, so that you can be a stronger woman and increase your contribution. Absolutely, I think it definitely is helping the entire community as well. And so with that also, we had many different veteran personalities that had joined the panel discussions and were conducting sessions as well. So with that, what, was that the idea of it and how, how strong do you think the message is coming across to all the ladies that are here today and who are watching us as well? So one of the things the women have is uh, lack of role models because I think always uh, women feel alone because uh, sometimes in our offices we are surrounded by men. So you don't have really too many successful women that you uh, can also learn from. So that's why we bring all these accomplished women because there are women who have I mean, when somebody is successful, you automatically assume they've had an easy journey, which is not the case. So we want people to learn from them, see how they, because I think some of the stories you heard, you saw how, I mean, probably I went, oh my gosh, I've been also in that situation, right? So everyone's stories are similar, but uh, like these are women who withstood all the challenges and be successful. So they are role models which is why we are bringing them so that the others can learn from them. Absolutely. And also, Anuji, another important question is, is it really important to break the bias for a better tomorrow? Yes. So like I said in my speech, uh, for me, the most difficult part in breaking the bias is people accepting that there is bias because a lot of the time people are in denial. They think everyone has a fair chance. There are women who do have a lot of opportunities, but that's the minority. The majority don't have it. So that's why it's important to keep the conversation alive, to talk about uh, the opportunity to break the bias. And uh, we are not, there is no fight against men. Like we want definitely the right person to be given the right opportunity and that includes, must include a woman also. So if, a, if the woman is the right person, she should be given the opportunity. So that's what we are saying. The break the bias doesn't mean giving women preferential treatment. It's giving the right human being the right opportunity. Absolutely. It's a great, great initiative. And also just a, one quick question before we let you go. Could you take us through or give us an insight into some of the future projects from WCIC uh, just so that we get uh, an idea about all the wonderful projects that you do? Yeah. So the, now this is one of our flagship events and the one other one we are hosting in November is the Women Entrepreneur Boards which started as way back is, as 1988. And this year we are also doing a huge effort to draw the women entrepreneurs from the provinces. And we will be recognizing the best entrepreneur from each province in addition to the general categories. So that's one project we are doing. And then another project is uh, we are evaluating large infrastructure projects uh, to see the opportunity for women uh, in those projects. Then we've also done uh, access to finance, the unconscious bias uh, in lending to women. We've had some great findings. So we are at the moment going to banks, educating them uh, on, uh, on these uh, so that they could accept and take corrective actions. 
Uh, then another project that we are really interest, uh, excited about is uh, in collaboration with IFC, we are doing a digital academy where we are doing uh, for women in Hambantota, Kurunagala, Gaul and Jaffna in Singhala and Tamil, uh, where we are doing a three-month program with individual mentoring for entrepreneurs so that then by the end of it, uh, by end of this year, we will have 100 strong women who are well trained and certified by a uh, chamber and every year we hope to increase the number. Well, we are extremely excited to be seeing that and we wish you all the very best for you and your career and also as a chairperson of WCIC. Thank you so much for talking to us and wishing you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am here with Sandra Vanduragala, a member of the WCIC. And Sandra, one quick question. How important is this event and how important do you think this event is to break the bias? Uh, I think that this event was very important uh, personally to me and for all the ladies who were here. Uh, actually, we were not thinking about the social biases and whatever the perspectives we had about the role of women in society. And uh, we really got a big uh, overview of uh, the real uh, facts uh, about uh, being biased, right? Sometimes it's in our minds and sometimes it's created by society. Uh, but uh, I, I personally feel it was a great eye-opener for me, even at this age, uh, that how I should react to women when they have real problems. Yes, absolutely. And also, considering how there were so many practical experiences shared with us by leading personalities in the industry, do you think that there is a lack of awareness uh, in the public which this event is helping to address at the moment? Yes, of course, there's a huge lack of uh, education and uh, public awareness. And this has given a lot of exposure and I wish that this also could be uh, uh, done in the provinces uh, where uh, these kind of exposures are not available for women. And I came with a delegation of uh, about 16 women from Kurunagala and I'm so glad and pleased that uh, they got this opportunity to be exposed so that they can really think differently about themselves and also about the women whom they impact. Absolutely. And we are very excited and happy to have met you as well. Thank you very much for speaking to us and wishing you all the very best. You're most welcome. I am here with Naushalya Rajapaksha, attorney at law and the founding director of Yehilia Foundation. Now, Shalya, one quick question. How important is this event to you and how do you think this event is breaking the bias? <clears throat> I think first of all, uh, I must thank the organizers for having me on board to speak about the importance of actually uh, speaking about gender awareness and the need for gender education that is absolutely important because most of the people don't even know the difference between sex and gender. And so if we are to speak of gender biasness, unconsciously or consciously it's imperative we understand what gender means what gender stereotyping means how it affects us the effects of it the causes of it so this conversation pretty much laid the foundation or the, or the stepping stones and I think conversations of this nature must definitely continue. Absolutely and congratulations on delivering such a wonderful session which I did manage to hear and it was absolutely inspiring and just a quick question relating to the panel discussion you mentioned how there was uh, all, uh, along with lack of awareness there was also a lack of alternatives could you give us your view on that and how this event could help to overcome such situations? No, actually it's a misconception in our society to the effect that some of the women who undergo abuse, so to say, are not educated enough or some of the women who go through harassment, they are not educated enough as to the harassment and abuse. No, women do know when they go through abuse and harassment. But like I highlighted earlier, sometimes they just don't know what to do about it. 
it's not that they don't know what harassment or abuse is but they just don't know what to do about it for an example simply speaking sometimes they don't know where to go and institute the police complaint and they don't know what happens after you institute the police complaint lack of knowledge once again lack of education once again so i think areas of that nature needs to be identified we need to do collective training programs where we educate women as to not just as to the laws but as to also the processes and procedures that is very important absolutely and also in collaboration with wcic would you take part in future events and what sort of events would you expect from wcic to take place in order to break the bias i think i would certainly collaborate with wcic even in my personal capacity even in the capacity of the foundation but i sincerely hope the organizers also think of having these sort of sessions in all the languages because now today's session was mostly in english so sometimes people who would not understand english would be excluded from these sessions so if we can also make it um, you know multilingualistic so that people would understand not just that even people with disabilities if they could attend these events and sort of receive such education and information i think that would be of um, impeccable value Absolutely and it was so lovely to meet you to see you and also to hear from you thank you so much for talking to us and wishing you all the very best thank you very much i'm humbled